Hello and welcome to Buy in Huntington Beach. I'm Jane Cameron. This program looks into the importance of shopping in Huntington Beach, knowing where the tax dollars from those purchases go, and realizing how it impacts all of us here in Surf City. In 2015, the 10 auto dealers and the Huntington Beach Auto Dealership Association brought in over $5.5 million in sales tax revenue. These auto dealers represent the top sales tax revenue producer in the city and brought in about 18% of all sales tax revenue collected by the city. Today, we're at Huntington Beach Hyundai. There's a new owner and a new general manager, and we get to see what this dealership is all about. We're with Mike Kahn of Huntington Beach Hyundai, the new general manager, so welcome. Thank you. So how long have you been the general manager here? Just since uh, August, we took over the dealership. So there's a new owner, a yep. new owner in town on Beach Boulevard. That's great. Yep. So how many employees do you have here at Huntington Beach Hyundai? 53. Wow, 53 hardworking individuals, That's right? That's right, definitely. <laughs> What is it like having a dealership on Beach Boulevard? It's a real unique area to have a dealership. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, we have tens of thousands of cars driving by daily. Uh, great community of people here. Very uh, loyal customers. Uh, we have a lot of salespeople and uh, management team here that work and live here in Huntington Beach. Um, yeah, it's a great community. Mike, tell me a little bit about the aspects of your dealership. I know we're sitting here in a beautiful lobby. It's cool, it's nice, it's relatively quiet. What happens when a customer walks onto this dealership? What do they see? Well, they're gonna be met with a friendly face, someone who's gonna be helpful and direct them on where to go if they're looking for sales, parts, or service. Um, you know, we have a really, uh, really helpful finance team helping customers, you know, obtain financing that may have challenge credit or something like that. Um, service department we have 22 bays so we're able to you know get quite a bit of business running through there and uh, get people in and out in a timely fashion and not have people sitting around but if they do want to sit and wait we have two great uh, waiting rooms and i smell popcorn yeah <laughs> <laughs> popcorn coffee waters all the all the good stuff yeah yeah it's nice um, we got a nice detail center in the back um, that really pretty much does uh, everything from a to z so if a customer needs to get a ding, dent, scratch, chip in the windshield, any, any sort of repairs done, we could definitely uh, accommodate them while they're having their vehicle serviced. A um, lot of uh, pre-owned vehicles to choose from. We have a little storage lot right down, a couple blocks down that uh, stores the majority of our new vehicles. Do you uh, know how many vehicles you have on the lot? Currently on the uh, new cars, we have just a touch over 300. And used cars, about 83 right now. Not to be exact. Not to be exact. <laughs> but that's your job as, as the of, GM, As right? of 7.30 this morning, yeah. So. Now I see what a GM has to do, has yeah. to count those cars. That's a pretty good selection for somebody who wants to come in yeah, and definitely. find something that, that strikes their fancy. Yeah, and it's not including anything that's at our other locations, so. Well, and that's a good reminder. Yeah, I mean, we got over 1,000 new cars in stock between the three of us, and I would say probably upwards of uh, 400 new cars just in our three locations here. Plus, we have a Hyundai store in Temecula and one up in uh, Van Nuys uh, Chrysler Jeep Dodge, Russell Westbrook store. Russell Westbrook, one of the premier NBA players, is yep. part of the ownership partners. Why choose Huntington Beach Hyundai? Uh, it's a great brand. Um, it's part of a, a three-car auto group that we're a part of. Um, if you go to uh, OCHyundaiDealers.com, you can see all three of the locations. It's a, uh, a really uh, a great great uh, brand to have you know we really take over the whole Orange County market having three stores that are uh, pretty close to each other and we're able to help each other out with that stuff so I think having that aspect of um, you know having the three stores three inventories three used car lots everything everything uh, very close to each other it really gives us that next step uh, ahead of the ahead of the competition to where if we need to get a, a vehicle or a different used car that we may not have on our lot here it makes it a uh, uh, a little bit easier for us to be able to to get something. I would think that would be really valuable for the <coughs> customer too, that they know Definitely. that the cars are here on the lot, but if there's something that they need, you've got that depth of resource to check at the other uh, dealerships. Yeah, definitely. And we, out of a click of a button, we can grab any car from any of our store's inventories and, and pull it right into our inventory and be able to sell it to our customer and, and uh, make sure that they're getting exactly what they want and not just buying something that we're trying to do 
sell them, but yet mm -hmm. we're looking to, we want to sell them something they want to buy, not try to push them onto something that we're, that we're trying to move. Which is awesome. They don't have to drive to that other location yeah. either. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So that must be real helpful for your salespeople who yeah, are trying true. to make the customer happy, right? They want the car that they want. Yep. Yeah. Location's so close. I mean, why, why not give it to them? So it really makes it easy for us. And we have a website, like I was said earlier, where you can go on and you can find our whole inventory. Everyone's inventory is right on there. So they can definitely uh, pick and choose what they want and we can get the car over here and even deliver it to them if needed. You're wearing shorts and yep. a polo shirt. Now, I have to tell you, usually when you go to a car dealership, you know the salesmen because they're the ones wearing the suits. Honestly, look very uncomfortable, especially in this beautiful beach weather. Especially so, during summer. Especially <laughs> during the summer. So yep. you and everyone who works here, they're wearing polo shirts, you're wearing shorts. Why the difference besides the fact that you're probably more comfortable? Definitely more comfortable. Um, we're just, you know, like we like our environment is to be a little bit more casual and and uh, kind of getting away from that old school car dealership feel. Um, you know, we like to treat our customers and make them feel like they're at home and, and relaxed. Tell me a little bit about yourself. You're a general manager, but I'm guessing you didn't start out as a general manager. How nope. did how did Mike Kahn end up right here? I just grew up in our, we had a family business of car dealerships and grew up, uh, you know, really working in every department there is. I started at Crown Toyota, I think, when I was 16 or almost 17 years old, doing old school gold packages on the cars and, <laughs> and the pre-delivery inspections and uh, installing the car alarms. So started with that and just uh, the benefit of having the, the family business, I got to work in each department and really get a, a hands-on knowledge of, of what goes on there and, and really how to interact with all the, all the different, uh, different systems that we use and, and uh, different people that we have in those departments. And uh, it's been a yeah, really, really good uh, learning experience and getting to this point has been a, definitely a good achievement. Well, it sounds like you're a unique manager, if you will, who really understands what everybody's doing, the challenges that your employees may have and you have a certain expectation too of what they need to perform. Yeah, definitely. Mike, describe for me the Hyundai brand. How are they compared to other car ma manufacturers that we see on Beach Boulevard even? Yeah, I mean, Hyundai is a pretty fantastic company. You got the number one warranty there is, uh, 10 year, 100,000 miles. I mean, you can't ask for more than that for a company to really back their product. Uh, you get a ton of car for the money. Technology is top notch. And then they also have the Genesis, which is you know, the, the Highline version of Hyundai, and the car is absolutely gorgeous. Incredible car, excellent technology, safety features, power, everything you can ask for. So it's a really, really good brand, and I'm very happy with them. You know, we've found that the auto dealerships in Huntington Beach all commit to the, the welfare and, and well-being of the community. Yep. You're not just a car dealership, but you're actually part of the community. And recently, Huntington Beach Hyundai donated $5,000 to the Save Our Strays of Huntington Beach Foundation, yep. which was part of a $50,000 contribution by the Huntington Beach auto dealers. How important is it, do you think, that you were part of that contribution? Uh, we love it. I mean, we're, we're looking forward to moving more into the community and really getting our name out there and helping out any which way we can when it comes to, you know, any of the football teams, or high schools, all, all sorts of stuff like that, really helping uh, giving back to the community. It's pretty significant, and that makes a big, big <coughs> difference in the community. Definitely. You know, it's good that you're a, a part of it. Keep selling those cars. Yeah, yeah, we love it. We're able to, you know, get the tax dollars for all the, the, the community, the fire police, schools, hospitals, all, all that good stuff. So it's, it's great. So the more, more cars we could sell here to our local community is uh, definitely helps out, helps out Huntington Beach. Well, Mike, I'd like to thank you. I mean, this is a great dealership and I think you've really shown people that this should be one of their choices when they're looking for a, a new or even a used car. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it and look forward to meeting some new customers and, and helping people out. When you look at the sincere commitment of the auto dealers to our community, the $5.5 million in sales tax revenue that is generated, and the added bonus of an annual beach parking pass with every car purchase, a $150 value, you see how it all helps to shape the quality of our lives. That's why we buy in Huntington Beach.
I'm Jane Cameron. So Vom Voss is a German franchise and Vom Voss stands for From the Cask and there's about 300 worldwide, about 30 in the US and the idea is, is everything tastes better from the cask. Fortunately we have a lot of rules so what we do is uh, we put them in cask barrels but they are a packaged product um, and that way you get to buy exactly what you're tasting. The last thing you want to do is taste a product that continues to age. So the idea is, is it's a try before you buy store. You could try everything in the store before you buy it. We have nuts, nut and seed oils, infused olive oils and olive oils, and vinegars of every flavor. So um, our balsams are fantastic. They're actually made from the fruit itself. The fruit becomes sherry, the sherry becomes vinegar. And so they're full fruit vinegars, uh, different from a traditional balsamic. Uh, well, it, it makes great sauces, which always helps in your cooking. This is the first location with a bar, so this is very new for Von Foss. Um, I did have to get a special permission approval from the owner of Von Foss for that, um, but he's a great guy. I, I told him kind of what I saw for Pacific City and for Huntington Beach. He came out here three times visiting Pacific City and, and hanging out in Lot 579, and he agreed the bar was the best way to go for this place, and he, he just absolutely loves it here. So every time he comes back to California, he's here at Lot 579. So absinthe was originally created in France by a midwife, and it became popular in France when there was a blight on the grapes, so there was less wine produced, so people started going to absinthe. Um, this is considered luching of the absinthe. And what Luching does is it brings out the botanicals in the absinthe to give it a fuller flavor. It goes from a clear liquid to a cloudy liquid, and when it's nice and cloudy, it's ready to drink. Rusty's Chips was started in the 80s by my dad, um, Rusty Sr. And, uh, and he had it throughout the 80s and then uh, shut it down in the early 90s and actually revamped it uh, with some pushing from his friends in 2000. And, uh, and we've been going strong ever since, almost 17 years, 30 if you count the first incarnation. So my dad back in the 80s, early 80s, went to Maui with his friends and there was a chip in Maui called the Kitchen Cooked Maui Chip. And, and that was the only place you could get them was on Maui. That's what started the whole Maui potato chip craze. And so my dad, when he went to Maui in the 80s, came back and, and managed bars at the time and figured, hey, if I could figure out how to cook these, maybe I could sell a couple bags here in California. And so he, when the, when the kitchen would close, he would go into the, the back room and start cooking and serve the chips to the bar patrons until he finally figured out the, the process that worked. And, uh, and yeah, so that, that's kind of where the, the potato chip came from. And today, Rusty's Chips has four products. We have the potato chips. We have black pepper potato chips, which is in a, a pink and black bag. Uh, stands out a lot on the shelf. And then our Surf City Strips tortilla chips, because uh, any Huntington Beach local knows you get strips, not triangles. So we have the regular tortilla chips that are sea salted, and then the chili lime spicy tortilla chips. And we actually use a, a, a taco tortilla. It's thicker than a tortilla chip tortilla. So most people use a tortilla chip tortilla, which is really thin and breaks on you. We use a taco grade tortilla. And we still actually cut them by hand with a knife. <laughs> well, I'd love to be in all the Albertsons, all the pavilions, um, Ralph's. Uh, that, that would be great for us. We're, we're still knocking on those doors, but uh, but one day that's gonna pan out, I'm sure. Uh, you know, just from uh, the, not only is there much more space here, uh, much more access for big trucks and stuff to get in and out, uh, but, but just the overall vibe of Huntington Beach. Uh, I, I've surfed here my whole life. My dad went to Huntington Beach High School, graduated in 69. 
um, yeah, we just, I, I surfed Golden West and 17th uh, and just like Huntington Beach. Uh, plus I get to take PCH home and see the waves. So <laughs> I eat a bag every day for lunch and I'm not sick of them yet. <laughs> This is the very first Rusty's potato chips bag from back in the 80s. I'm just proud, proud that my dad was able to come up with something that's, that's as good as it is. Something that's lasted this long. This is Rusty's chips. This, this is where it all started. That's the beginning. got a long list of things to do. Well, pack, board the dogs, shut the mail down. Oh, and what about if you're going on a big trip and you need a passport? Well, there's a way at the city of Huntington Beach to get a passport easily. And by doing so, you and others are providing about a quarter of a million dollars to the city. We're with Robin Estenislaw, who is the city clerk since November 2016, and you've got a great service here for the community. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, Jane. I want to thank you for having me here today to highlight that service. We're uh, very proud of it. I think anyone who's going to go on a trip and needs a passport, they need to come and see your staff. They absolutely do. We're here to serve, and you know, it's, it's a great service that we provide to the community. And it's, we're open for business every day, except holidays, of course. Yeah. So how long have you been providing the services? We've been providing passport services here in Huntington Beach since February of 2000. So 17 years, it's been a long time. That is a lot of travelers who yeah. have come in to start yes. that trip. Absolutely so. And of course, the business has grown um, in the past few years, you know, travel standards changed a few years back and so now um, in order to internationally go anywhere you have to have that passport in your pocket so it's nice that you can provide this service which helps the the members of our community and also generate revenue for the city as well so tell me a little bit about how it all works and and why you have something that uh, provides a revenue to support these services yes well, I'd love to um, basically um, we don't um, regulate the fee that we charge our customers to um, process their pass passport application. It's through the U.S. Department of State. They allow us to collect $25 on each application that we process. And so, you know, this year alone, we have done 7,500 plus applications, you know, and so that with, um, uh, we also offer, offer photo services here and we can collect ten dollars for that fee so you're looking at you know annually about a quarter of a million dollars that's a lot of money now of course we do have staff charges you know we have a budget to man that counter out there but that only represents about thirty percent of what we collect so it's just a great source of revenue uh -huh. and it provides a great service to our community it's convenient for them we have a wonderful lobby. They come here. We, you know, I, I can just go on and on. I mean. You know, anytime you have to deal with a federal form, it's a challenge. It's a pain. You know, it's just, it's a weird thing to do. Um, yet, it seems like your office and the service that you provide, people are, are kind of happy when they leave. Yeah, it's really true, Jane. So. You know, it's intimidating. A federal form, people are very nervous about filling it out correctly. They feel that um, if they don't, they're going to, for whatever reason, be rejected. So when they come in, we try to do our best to settle them down and provide guidance in, if they have questions and just kind of, I don't know, make it more like a home environment. We treat our customers like family so that uh, and especially moms and dads come in with kids it's, it's really not always that easy to manage little ones we have toys and things in our lobby so that the kids can entertain themselves so that or the adults it, correct <laughs> so, yes and and uh, but it, it really works out uh, beautifully because um, you know we just try to um, a lot of people that um, 
aren't sure if they have the right records that they need and everything, we just do our best to make sure that everything is complete and that they will successfully receive their document in time for travel. And since I've been here, I, I began in 2005 in this department, I'm not aware of anybody missing their, their plane because their passport wasn't issued. So it's <laughs> thank, pretty good news. <laughs> thank yeah, goodness. exactly. You know, I've heard that even you have to sometimes put your passport number when you're making a reservation for the plane. That's true. That's true. So a lot of people come in here last minute. They need to um, get their passport in, in order to make their reservations. We can't process every passport. There are situations where we can't help someone if they're traveling within 14 days. We have to get them an appointment in Los Angeles. We can't do that that quick. But three weeks and more, we can make sure that they get their document in time. So, Have you heard any of the comments from people who have used the services? We, we get such nice feedback from our community. Um, they say, I came in feeling afraid and I'm leaving happy. Um, some people describe how easy it was. Uh, they tell us that they're going to tell their friends and neighbors. Um, we've had people visit our facility from cities like Barstow, Temecula, San Diego. I, they've heard about us and also we don't require an appointment. So we serve on a first come first serve basis. And a lot of people in other areas, if they can't get an appointment, you know, travel, you know, it, if they can't get their passport issued, they've got to go somewhere to get it. So they've heard about us. Well, how do people hear about you? Do you advertise? We do. We do advertise. We have um, a devoted web page that um, is designed strictly just for generic information. It also has links to um, the U.S. Department of State if they have special circumstances and they need information. But we also go out in our local newspapers and marketing brochures. We've um, even put posters up in bus bench shelters. Um, we also worked with our information services department to um, be uh, have a link that when people search the internet, it goes directly to us in this area. And it works. People will come in and they'll say, oh, I googled passport service and you guys are the first one that came up. So it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> it works. You so. know, it's such a great program, but it sounds like there's a lot of detail to it that other cities couldn't just jump in and do it, right? You're working with the federal government. We've had a lot of cities call us and ask what it took for us to become a, an acceptance facility. And if they don't have staff to, to man the, the, the business, it just won't work. It's not something where you could just every so often run somebody to the counter. I guess they could set it up that way, but um, we really understood very early um, how valuable it was to our community and so we've just really devoted a lot of time and effort. We've built a good reputation out there for this business. Which means you've got educated staff that we, know how to deal with those dang federal forms. That's correct and everybody in our office is trained. Everybody. All full-time, all part-time. We are all certified agents. So when it gets busy at our counter we can all pitch in and help. So. Well, you I mentioned like you're not open during the holidays, no. but what are the hours for the, your passport services? Well, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. We don't turn anybody away. Somebody comes in and, at 5 o'clock and they, get, they happen to get in the building at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Sometimes they've come up the stairs. They know where we're at. And they've come up the stairs and we let them in. And we just stay until everybody is finished because we don't, you know, if they're here and they've made the trip over here, some people call. They say, I'm on the corner of... You know, blah, blah, blah. Am <laughs> I going to make it? And we'll say, we'll wait for you. Yeah, so that they can get their business done. And especially with kids. Parents that come in with kids, they have to be present. So if they've made the time to leave their jobs and come down here and get this business taken care of, we'll serve them and we'll wait. What an incredible service you provide yeah, and great. the revenue that you generate. I, I mean, it's a win win situation. It's fabulous. Any parting comments on this wonderful service you provide? One of my staff said, I believe that what truly makes us great is our desire to provide excellent service. We offer valuable information and guidance. We strive to process every application in a manner that assures that the U.S. Department of State will be able to issue the applicant's passport. And we take the time to talk people down when they are frustrated and completely overwhelmed 
by the process or by the request for the required documents. Additionally, I believe that we have a reputation for treating people with respect and kindness. We treat applicants with unique and or special circumstances with professionalism and seek to quickly dispel their fears, intimidation, or discomfort about the application process and about having to share personal and private information. Robin, I'd like to thank you. This is a wonderful service and I'm sure I will remember it when I take that big trip. Well, you know what I said, Jane, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, come and see us anytime. We're here to help. <laughs> Buy in Huntington Beach is more than just dollars and cents. It makes sense to make your purchases in Huntington Beach. Whether it's supporting a new business or a company that has called Huntington Beach home for many years, it's the dollars that count and the dollars that continue to strive for the quality of life that we all want. Whether it's on the sand or in the beach or at City Hall, make your purchases count. I'm Jane Cameron.